the station, the slave station is no police station, no train station, no bus station. Calling all bad slaves from long gone till nigh. Slaves that recognize their culture never bend, never bow. Never listen to Babylonian philosophy, but interested in mother hurt and mother life and mother liberty. All bad slaves tune in to the Bara station, Jabon station. To share some things, you know, because I'm very concerned about how the world is looking at Rasta. And how Rastafari is being used to denigrate the Rastaban and the Rasta people, which there is a clear distinction as to who Rasta is. I want to um, first speak of a, a brethren that I became acquainted with years, many years now. He's no longer with us on this plane, but he's in the history of the reggae music and in the jazz culture of Jamaica. His name is Cedric Brooks. I became acquainted with Cedric Brooks early. And I entered into South Florida and you know I was rearing my children at that time, all eight of them. And I met Cedric before I met Cedric. I was doing a little study, a thought came to me to do a paper while I was studying in the medical field within the South Florida there. A branch, you know, specialty in the medical field there. Healing, health and wellness has always been a passion for me. Not so much a passion, but something that I was, uh, uh, I have that interest in, always to know how healthy you know you, what is this health thing and how does the body work and so forth and i was writing a paper um it was about music and in the correlation between the american music you know, popular mm -hmm. music and the music of jamaica and how they intertwine and and so on and so forth and in there i that's where i first met cedric in my researching connection. I came upon Count Ozzy and, and the, the, the Sons of Rastafari, Mystic Sons of Rastafari. It's the name of the uh, ensemble or the, the, the band that played along with him and you know it brought because it, it, it connected me to Count Basie of um, the American popular side and how the two they used to Count Basie used to go to, to co collaborate with Count, with Count Ozzy and so on and so forth. Um, but Cedric, you don't hear his name much mentioned, you know, but I got to meet Cedric through a great friend of mine by the name of Lorna Lesperance, a beautiful woman, great educator. And she's also a musician in her own rights, you know. To this day, we are still friends and connected. I speak to uh, Cedric's daughter, I mean sister, um, from time to time, Itosi Brooks, and she's doing some great work down in South Florida also. Um, but Cedric was a very mild mannered Rastaman. I'm never have locks upon the head, you know, and at some point I, I, I would think that he might I've had locks at some point. I know his sister Tosi, she wear her locks and I met his, uh, two of his children. I don't know if he had more, but I met two sons of his. I don't recall their names at this time. 
But Cedric was a very mild-mannered, very peaceful man, very free in his spirit. He was never loud and boisterous and, you know, cantankerous. It wasn't that type of a man, you know. And he spoke to me about Pinnacle and, and he spoke to me about several things. And this was how I began to understand a little bit and get to know more about this life that I was living as a Rasta man, because you see, I, I never declare, say I is a Rasta far eye, but because of the popularity of Rasta far eye, which came about due to the Marcus Garvey's um, prophetic statement to look to Africa. And then with the advent of uh, the reggae music rising up and Bob Marley being such a great advocate of his Imperial Majesty and Rastafari and to bring the world to attention to know of these things to come about, you know, people begin to, what they say, brand an image upon the whole consciousness of Rastafari, which really is the consciousness of uh, Marcus Garvey. Because we cannot speak of Rastafari, Makonin, not in our culture as Rasta, without acknowledging and knowing that it is Marcus Garvey that sound the trumpet, that shine the light, that point into the direction. So Marcus Garvey, you know, become a very intricate and a very firm foundation of what, when we say Rastaman, when we are talking about Rastaman, and to also the consciousness, the Rasta consciousness is that of Marcus Garvey, is not of his imperial majesty. Haile Selassie. And this is no disrespect for Rastafarians and Rastafarianism. You know, I, I respect Rastafarians and Rastafarianism for what it is, um, what it, for what it is worth. However, you know, we have to stop looking at the tree and start looking at the fruit that the tree bears. So this is the Rastaman tradition, which is a positive vibration, but Mali sing of it. You know. But this 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 Rasta is about. Rasta never come to bring forth no violence unto anyone. We know this to be true. The only thing the most violence Rasta ever bring is to say I don't want to tie myself no longer with a colonialist and an imperialist system. That's, that, that was the most egregious thing Rasta ever do against anybody. To say, I no longer have any interest in, uh, in your system. I divorce your system. This is the main basis for the Rasta consciousness. So the movement is based upon total extraction. This was the, 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 the whole idea. Upon recognition and acceptance of the evilous system, of the Babylonian system, of oppression and downpression. We say, okay, no problem. You want us to be down and press down? We're going to go down and stay down. We want nothing to do with you anymore. Now, we must also remember that when we speak about Rasta movement, we are speaking about propaganda 
when it comes to the definition and identity of the movement itself as well as the the, the original what we say the the essence or the essential elements that were involved in the the rising up of the consciousness of the rasta that um, a vast majority of the information that was being perpetrated throughout the the dominant society of Jamaica and it spread throughout the world even to this day was is all propaganda I call it poo-poo yanda because it's poo-poo you know you, you drop it and you flush it and so it's poo-poo poo-poo yanda and so It was based on lies. Oh, the, the, the dirty rasta them, you know, the the, the, the wolipa, bugs and insects and living at their head and all kind of something. Them no, them not clean, them dirty, them nasty. Now, you can go to any society throughout the world, and you will find people that they would call them. They divorce the systems of those places. Some of them have psychological and mental problems, yes, uh, imbalances and whatnot, you know. But there are some, some of them, a lot of them just divorce the system and give up, you know, on themselves and so on and so forth. Not necessarily that they have a psychological problem or anything. It's just that they give up on the system, you know. These beings are advanced beings. These are people that that would be commonly referred to as fools. One fool, fool man, this and fool, fool woman, that and them fool, fool picnic and you know some would call them madman, mad woman. Some would call them bum. You see, so now they begin to use these images, which were prevalent in the society long before Rasta consciousness even rise up. One of the places that we could find refuge as Rasta, because there was a lot of discrimination and violation and brutalization. When I was in in the heart, in the ghetto, they said the ghetto in amongst the sufferers and the, the poor people. And so they began to paint this picture, dominant society that is, began to paint this picture of propaganda against the Rasta consciousness and the Rasta energy of movement to say, separate from the colonialists, imperialists, and leave them alone. So it is out of that movement that you, what you see now today as Rastafari and Rastafarianism, that all this thing come out, out of. What we have embedded now inside of the Rasta movement is a, a lot of educated, people, people that know for read very well and articulate very well, a lot of them are educated. And you know, the, the, the scriptures of the Christians speak of them and call them um, educated fools, you know, they are, they are learned fools. You know, they have much knowledge of learned, but they have no knowledge of self. Well, the Rasta movement was brought about based upon knowledge of self and remember when i say rasta movement when you hear the word rasta movement you know we are speaking of the movement of marcus garvey marcus garvey was one of the greatest diplomats to walk the planet here in these modern times marcus garvey was a very skilled businessman and he was a very skilled author and literary individual so when you hear the word rasta you know we are speaking of marcus garvey's ideology philosophy and uh, marcus garvey's insights and the works and the teachings of marcus garvey and the life of marcus garvey that's the foundation of rasta without that there is no rasta and without the colonialism, in colonialist and the imperialist, there would not be a Rasta again. Because it's out of that we are coming from. And then you have also those that are in the movement today, 
that are that are motivated through religion and they are using religion to as if it's a spiritual thing but religion is a theocratic thing it is not a spiritual thing religion is a ceremonial thing it's a dogma that's what it is now rasta and i deal with dogma we're not rebuking dogma or we're not fighting against dogma we're not fighting against religion car you know if you have a key for the back door and a key for the front door it's the two key lead inside of the house the house is a spiritual house you know it has nothing to do with religion you see the man who come through the window is a violator. He not belong inside. We must come through the window for. You know, a door make you enter through, through a, 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 a building. The building nine I speak of now is the physical body, which is the flesh. So religion is one of the keys, in not just words, scriptures, is one of the keys that will enable a man to be able to enter into the true house of the living God and gain wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, overstanding, a rock standing. So we are here. Just um, speaking directly to the essence of what is Rasta. And I've said before, you may study the scriptures, yes. And the scriptures can be our guide and lead you into the knowledge of Rasta. You can go to school and study the writings of many. And you can gain the knowledge of Rasta to a degree. All of these are to the, a degree, but the highest degree is to enter into your own mind and your own heart and to traverse the highways and the byways of your flesh self in order to know Rasta using the guidelines of goodwill and goodness, righteousness, truth, Justice, mercy, understanding. And then you will know the true consciousness of Rasta. It is not a choosing of one or the other. Like people can say, you know, one convert from this to that. Oh, you're going to convert. Oh, you're going to choose. Oh, you're going to convert to yourself. That is, does it make sense? Or you, or you gonna convert to yourself? And any time a man convert from one thing to the next thing, he's, 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 what he's doing is canceling himself out. God, when you speak of God, God, God is a, is a big thing in the world, you know. And them ask questions like, what is God and who is God and all them something there. God is energy which cannot be created nor can it be destroyed. That is the only thing that I have come to the knowledge of that cannot be created and cannot be destroyed is energy. And energy again is defined in a scientific manner and in a mathematical manner and in the, in, in, in the school of physics. And mathematics. Energy is defined as the ability to work, the ability to do work, to do something. The ability that is energy. It can be transferred, you know, from one state to a next state of 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 manifestation. 
but you cannot be creative. You can't create energy. You can't destroy energy. So when you try to talk about God, you know, it's energy they are really and truly speaking of. Life is an energy. You can't create life and you can't destroy life because a child is born. That is not the creation of life. That's called procreation. In the alignment, in the alignment with life. You know, like we can be we can be given the, the, the molecular structure of water, but we can't create water. We can say water is H2O, but there are also other forms of water. You know, that is not H2O in molecular structure, but it's water nonetheless. And so, therefore, you know, when we speak about God, know that this God is energy. That's what we're really and truly, in essence, talking about, energy. And you have all forms of energy, which I'm looking deeper into it. Uh, I will come at the next time to give you some deeper breakdown into the different forms of energy. Um, when, but when you look at the flesh of man, the conception of man, which is done through with a male and female um, um, effort and energy, um, we are then made up of the three elements of energy itself, information, and time. And these three aspects is what make I and I to be who I and I is. These aspects, as you know, information, energy, and time, these are all inexhaustible, infinite and eternal and infallible elements of, of energy, of God. If you want to give it a, you know, I don't like to use the word term God because that is what brings confusion. Because that is a, a name made up by men, a term made up by men, but it's actually energy, the ability to do work. So we are made up of these three things. And so this is Rasta. Rasta is dealing with the essence of things. The consciousness is what we're speaking of when we speak of Rasta. Now, as far as is Imperial Majesty Ayala Selassie come forward and in you know, it is only fear that we should um, connect Rasta with His Majesty, because the mere fact that we are we are now referred to as Rasta is not because of Marcus Garvey in terms of that word sound. Rasta is coming from His Majesty. His name. Is superimposed upon I and I now. Now, which people upon earth, you know, a name is given the name of the king. The consciousness, the awareness was ignited by Marcus Garvey, and the name. came upon I and I, and I and I ascended into the world to be known as Rasta. And I said, why are you name Rasta? Why are you calling the Rasta? Because, uh, because we recognize and acknowledge and identify and align ourselves with His Imperial Majesty, Haile Selassie, the first Emperor of Ethiopia, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Conquering Lion of Judah, of the root and the line of David. Now, what a lot of people in the world don't want to accept is that it's not I and I is saying this. We now make up this. This is not propaganda. This is truth. Human history, the history of governments and the world, will declare that Rastafari Makinen is the King of Kings, 
the Lord of Lords, the conquering lion of Judah. This is written not only in the historical books, but in the spiritual books, like the King James Version. Declares this, because the question that was asked by John in the book of Revelation is, how, how will we recognize the Lamb? Now, as is written, he will have a marking on his vesture, and he will be of the root and the loin of David, and he will have the titles, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Conquering Lion of Judah. So we know this is written in the Bible. We did not write it there. The Bible writers, the, th the, the theologians and the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sudicees and whoever these people are that is doing all these translations, they do this and they put it there. And then Rastafari Makonen come, found worthy to sit upon the throne, head of the church, defender of the faith, sits upon the throne. Not only sit there, but is given the titles. And all the nations of the world, the, the, those were who were significant to the process of the coronation, were there. All of the different priests from the different churches were all there. And for all these ones who say they are Rastafari and our Rastafarianism is their doctrine or whatever. Name Ayman Rastaman one individual or one organization or entity on November 2nd, 1930 or leading up to that, or prior, or, or prior after that, subsequently after that, that's declared to the world that Ethiopia, His Imperial Majesty, and the coronation is bogus and blasphemous, I would like, if anyone have this information, to please publish it so that I can be aware and, and do some further inquiry into who these people are that, that rebuke His Majesty's crowning. Because 72 different nations, you know, and I'm quite sure there was many more, 72 different nations were gathered at His coronation. And if He wasn't who He, he was proclaimed to be, then why did not anyone in the world stand up and make this known? That this man, this one, these people are illegitimate and are not what they claim to be. Why did that not happen? As far as I know anyway, it did not happen. And there were other titles given to his imperial majesty, Haile Selassie, that is not mentioned. Most of the, the most common uh, titles is the king of kings, lord of lords, conquering line of Judah. There were many others. So this is where Rastaman, you know, stand. Because I hear people talk and see people get up and they speak these, these, these elaborate intellectual explanations of, of this and that and this and that and priest this and priest that and all these. These are religious energies. These are religious energies. And it is fine. There's nothing wrong with it now. I just want to be clear. I have to be clear because I am a Rastaman. And I know who I am. And there's no one can come explain to the world who I am. Who are you going to explain who a next man is? No. Be who you are. Who, whomever you are. Be that. 
Because that is really all you can do. We are not carbon copies. Marcus taught us very well. He told us forward ever and backward never. So we're not carbon copies. We are moving towards a, 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 a specific goal. Liberation. Self-determination. Self-reliance. Self-sufficiency. Self-responsibility. Self-control. And self-discipline. So there is no ambiguity in I and I tradition as Rasta. We are not uneducated. We are not dumb. His Majesty didn't give I and I the church because I and I was dumb and uneducated and didn't know God. No. His Majesty didn't weep for I and I because I and I was so deplorable and disgusting. His Majesty weep for I and I because out of all of the population of the, of the species of human beings on this earth, we were the only ones that saw him for who he is. I want to make that very clear. The tradition of his impure Majesty, Haile Selassie, and the life of Rastafari Makanen is directly linked to Rasta movement towards liberation. The purity of mind is very important. In the Buddhist spiritual consciousness, they say, purify your mind. The mind must be purified. And if the mind is purified, therefore the heart is purified because they are connected. There is no separation between mind body and spirit or what we call soul. I learned from one of my grandchildren that the body, the physical flesh body, that everybody wants to rebuke and dash away and destroy and ego this and ego that. I learned. Didn't ask him nothing. Just, uh, but we are reason one day and one of, one of my one tell me say, was it my, no, my daughter, one of my daughters tell me, say, the body, the flesh, is the outer spirit, is the outer spirit. This is where we live. So, we you know, I just want to really, you know, because it, it kind of disturbs my mind when I hear certain things and how oh, people are cuss. A cuss rasta man and a cuss a rasta man and a, and a, you know, because we mix up with them, you see. We're not for mix up with them. We say, if we, if we not mix up with them, them can't have nothing to say about I and I. <laughs> Don't watch the tree look on the fruit. I watch the tree for, the tree is just a tree. Look at the fruit. That's why when I listen to um, the International Rastafari Ambassador, you know, the fruit, the fruit, me I look for, you know. <laughs> now watch him, you know. The fruit, the essence of what he is, is putting forward. Oh, he may live and oh, he may move. And what he, may, he, what he is bearing, you know, what a man... What a man see out of his mouth is a fruit, you know. Can poison others, I can resuscitate and become a vital energy for others, you know. So, this is what I and I just have to just look upon things, you know. 
and look at it with a with a with a yes kind of tune out there for a minute uh, disturbing a call come in and it was not a relevant call but it disturbed the, the reasoning you know but Marley I was of some lyrics that him singing in one song him say him say hypocrites and parasites will come up and take a bite but if your night should turn to day a lot of people would run away. Now I don't know others receive that. No, but this is remember, you know. We attack Rasta, you know. We attack those that were held down. And you may hear the international Rastafari ambassador Jaboni speak on this many times. You speak of the dark days. The dark days when it was daylight, but it was like night all, all the time. Because oh, I didn't have to move for safety. Because they no not like with stance. Remember, you know, the stance was that of resistance. When you talk, when you put up a resistance, you know, your days become nights and your nights are simply nights you will find more rest and peace in the night night than in the day night kind of day time you get whole heap of, whole heap of, um, pushback from the di from the dominant society so when Bob sing the music they know hypocrites and parasites will come up and take a bite. What is a hypocrite? And I'm relating what I'm saying, you know, to today, right now, we are experiencing whole heap of hypocrite. The different mansions that okay. rose up and became a part of the Rasta movement, the Rastafarian movement, they came up in their own right and for their own purposes and reasons. Now, an hypocrite is someone uh, that profess to be something which they are not. One of the only ways to find out a hypocrite, a hypocrite and a genial, you know, in Jamaica and Twang, Jinal, is basically one and the same. You know, go around, fool people, farm like you're rich but you're poor, farm like you, one like you, you're stupid but you're well educated, and so on and so forth. And hypocrite, one will go on like them a rasta, but them are really a heathen, you know. These are things, you know, the one Isa, known to the Muslim, to the Christian known as Jesus. When him go in at the church and see them in their buy and sell, him call him to them a hypocrite and him toss them out. These are examples of what is a hypocrite. Connecting all this to the lyrics of hypocrites and parasite, you know, will come to take a bite. But they say, some of them will eat and drink with you. Then behind them, sus upon you. These are the lyrics now. So the hypocrites now, them come up. Who are they? These are the people spreading sparse rumors about Rasta and try to formulate and make things up as, as they go along. They're not living the Rasta. They are not obedient to Rastafari Makonen. They are not obedient to Haile Selassie. They are not obedient. Because if you read the words of his impure majesty, you will overstand say, this man is speaking truth. As many were, he was not the only one. Truth was being spoken from, from time immemorial. 
what they do to, to, to the Christ, they will do to anyone who walk in that way. And all the Christ fight, anyone who walk in the way of Christ will fight them the same way. So we come to fight them. We not come to bow or bend to them as Rasta now. So the hypocrites, they come and they come up and they sit amongst, amongst the Rasta in a denier bingi and in the gatherings. But all the while they might conceive how they might go overture, how they might go mislead, how they might go rape, how they might go abuse, how they might go do all of these things. I mean, I talk about Naya Bing, you know. I mean, I talk about the hypocrites and the parasite them. Mm. We rise up because of the humbleness and the love and the guidance, the perfect love, you know, and the guidance of Rasta. Them, them come no, them call them the people wolf in sheep clothing. See? So when he said that, you know, he said, and he said, and if your night should turn to day, in other words, what am I saying? You know, if you should become acceptable to the society, if you should become, if you should be awarded and rewarded by the society, if your night should turn to day and you become revered and honored, a lot of them would have run away. Why? Because the light of your success, the light of your triumph, the light of your victory, they would become exposed. Because within your success and within your, your, your rising to the righteousness of your liberty, they're not going to be able to rise with you. Because they are hypocrites. They're not really, they're not really in a way, you know. Them just come for, for, as parasite to feed off of the love and the glory and the and the oneness of Rasta. So you have many rise up and then put on locks on their head and then start sing music. They start make money. They start earn money. Which is the God of the Eden. Money is the God and the goddess of the Eden. The heathen is, is against righteousness, against energy. The heathen is trying to control energy. The, the heathen want to create energy when, when energy cannot be created and energy cannot be destroyed. The heathen is trying to destroy energy. As you see what is going on in Palestine and, and, and around the world, what happened down there in Ukraine, and around the world, what is been up, what is happening down there in hey, Haiti? And around the world, what is happening in Jamaica, Yamaka? And around the world, what is happening? You know, <laughs> you take a pick. You know, it's happening everywhere. On every farm, in every farm, the sorcerers are unleashing sorceries upon the peoples of the earth in the form of pandemics. So we, we, we have to know these things and re know, realize, we to realize really where I go on. So when them say hypocrites and parasites will come up to take a bite, but if your night should turn to day, a lot of them would run away. You see? This is what is happening right now. Even the children of Bob Marley now take the stance where they might take. They might go on like everybody, they might go on like commoners. They might go on like commoners. You know? Then I, a, <laughs> when the right time comes, we will know who the real revolutionary is. You know? Bob Marley was a revolutionary in his own right. In his own life, he just accepted himself wholly. And people looking at some, looking at that as some kind of conversion. No, let us not do that, please. 
this is Babylonian mentality. If a man, if a man see a way and him see the way to be right and him accept that way and him take it over on himself, him not abandoning the way that brought him to that consciousness. He's just upgrading his, 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 his knowledge and his understanding, his wisdom pertaining to those things. People are saying, oh, you know, um, Jesus Christ saved people, but his majesty save no one. Oh, who Jesus save? Show me one somebody where Jesus save. Nobody must save nobody, because that is not how it work. Every man must save himself. Because every man's enemy is himself. Go back and read the Bible for those who are Bible readers and, 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 and memorizing the Bible. Those who memorize the Bible and something. The Lord's Prayer was given by the said one who called Jesus Christ. And the reason he gave it to the people so the people go directly to the Father. Where you didn't have to kill an animal and shed the blood of an innocent animal for a sin where you commit. So please do not indoctrinate I and I people with this false belief that a man is going to come and save another man just by calling him name. That is does is not that is that's not what is saving the people. Is your own virtue within you, and Christ spoke of this. He says, "Virtue is virtue, heal a man." And the more virtue you gather unto yourself, is the more healing will take place towards yourself. And you are able to heal others with your virtue. Because you are able to ignite virtue in others. That is why the, 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 the religious world is so adamant that we believe. Not that we know, you know. That we believe. Because if you don't believe in yourself, how can you do anything? If you don't believe that you are whole and that you are well, how can you become well? If you are in fear, you will kill yourself because fear destroys the mind. It's the mind killer. So you see, we speak in terms of these things to bring clarity and to bring crystal clarity to those who seek that degree. As Rasta, there are certain things we stay away from. Within the new faculty of thinking, we must abandon presumptions. We must abandon assumptions. We must abandon conjecture. Why do we dwell on what and how we see things? We must abandon that attitude, that type of a personality and character that wants to see things how we see. I see, I see things like this, you know, or oh, I see things, you know. But what about how things are? Why aren't we looking at things the way they are? And not all we see it. Because there's a flaw in all we see it. Because I might maybe standing in the north looking to the south and looking at the thing where you are looking upon, but you're there in the east looking to the west at what? The same thing where the man in the north look upon. And we are seeing two different sitting. Another man might be in a tree and I look down upon the same sitting where the man in the north look upon. See him sitting, sitting a change. 
But all the way, I, I argue and a bitch and I moan and I groan about how we see things and we always see things is the right way and is the best way. No, brethren and sisters and peoples of the earth. They are the way things are. And the way we see it becomes an irrelevant fact. And the only relevancy in how we see things is when we come together and reason and share what we are seeing with one another. Mm. And we become brethren and sisters, we become brothers and sisters, we become kin and kith, we become family, we become one blood, we become one mind, we become one heart. Because only one breath governs all of life. One breath, and the breath is the energy that gets things done. Without the breath, you cannot do anything. If you have no breath, you have no locomotion or no movement. You cannot move. Energy moves things. That's why the river is always moving. That's why the sun is always moving. That's why the moon is in its path. That's why birds fly. That's why the wind and the breeze blow. That's why everything is what it is. It's not how oh, you see things or I see things. It's how oh, we see things. And how oh, we see things is the way it is. We must focus on what it is. We must come together. We must converge together, not diverge. We must converge, come together, unify ourselves, strengthen ourselves, heal ourselves first, strengthen ourselves secondly, come together first, heal ourselves second, strengthen ourselves third, and live happy, live in peace, adapt principles of peace, principles of love, perfect love, principles of truth, principles and precepts of brotherhood, sisterhood. This is Rasta. So I don't know all the other things that are going on people are chat about, you know, if we're, not, if we're not building a school and not building a, no hospital and not building a, no, no towns, then the, 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 what difference does it make if Bob Marley uh, convert into whatever I never can. You know, make no difference. If we're not loving one another, if we're not uniting ourselves as one united Africa, one united black race of people upon earth, then what difference does it make? For all of the, the arguments we hear on social media and people are talk about this and talk about that. None of them things make no difference. So rest in a comfy fit mix up in a them with them say bang around. You know. When you come for mix up in a them bang around, we're not come for sell out. I ain't no come for sell out no because we don't have nothing for sell. And we don't come for buy nothing from Babylon. Cause Babylon have nothing for, for sell to we. So as a Rasta man now, may I speak straight out, you know. I man I and I have love for the rock stone where you see. You see one big rock, take a moment, you walk road and you see one big rock. Take a moment and sit down upon the rock, no man. Have a reasoning with the rock, no man. Make the rock knows where you are, where you are, where you are seek and Ask the rock to speak on your behalf now. To that which cannot be created and that which cannot be destroyed. The rock was created by the said one. And the rock speak. Just like I and I can speak. You know, lean upon one beautiful tree, you know. Have a reason with the tree, you know, man. Take off your shoes, take off your socks, and put your foot on dirt, on earth, no man. 
communicate with your family. Make them know how you feel. Cleanse your mind. Cleanse your heart. Be the Christ. Be the Buddha. Be the transcendent spirit, the transcending being, the one that moved to the highest level of himself. Rastafari did that, you know. Rastafari Makanen did that. To be worthy. To be known. When you see His Majesty point you to the, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, when you see His Majesty point you to that, you know, the man is fulfilling his position. And if, and if a Rasta man comes along and say he, 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 he becomes a member of that church, he's fulfilling his position. If he accepts Christ as his savior, he's fulfilling his position. He's not abandoning nothing. He's, he's upgrading himself to a next level of his own consciousness. Rasta cannot be created and Rasta cannot be destroyed. Rasta is pure energy. Ability to do work. We are the manifestation of such. So as a Rasta man, I say, I bid all those greater insight. Let us go on and, 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 and acquire the lands that we need to build our, 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 our culture. We have a right to do that under the UN DRIP, the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of the Indigenous People. Build our agricultural systems because there's no culture without agriculture. We must build our housing system because our people must be housed. We must house ourselves. That's the responsibility that we have. We must build our teaching systems because there's a responsibility to hand down knowledge and teachings to our children and to our unborn. We must build our health systems because this is our responsibility to determine our strength through health. How healthy are we? We must build our econ economy because this is how we communicate with the rest of the world and the different cultures through commerce, through commerce, the sharing of, of knowledge and the sharing of of crafts and, and the things that we produce. And as Marcus Garvey say, we can accomplish what we will. We can do this. Sma'atawi amun sebek. Sma'at. Sma'at. Awi amun sebek. United unity is the key. Rastaman. Positive vibrations. Peace, love, and harmony. And to all, no happiness without peace. Righteousness is the foundation of all things. Positive vibrations.